HyperExecute. HyperExecute is a smart test orchestration platform to run your end-to-end -end tests at the fastest speed possible. Um, on HyperExecute, we support all three OSs, that is Windows, Mac OS, as well as Linux Docker containers. So before we move on to the working session of how HyperExecute works, uh, let me help you understand why this was built and what is the problem that we are solving. So why are traditional solutions so slow? So when I say traditional solutions, I mean the uh, standard Selenium grids that are on cloud. So how they work is, as you can see, let's say we have a script in India that communicates with a hub that is in Singapore and it communicates with the data center that's in Europe and eventually, for example, your website is hosted in the US. So the script is traveling almost halfway around the globe to interact with the website and perform that Selenium test case. So within that uh, communication, there are multiple network hops happening to and fro. And let's say if there's a slight network drop or network glitch happening in between, it may result into test flakiness, um, test case failures, and then numerous other um, issues. And it also adds on to the latency, so you can see a dip in performance as well. So with HyperExecute, what we did was we packaged the first three components, that's the script, the hub, and the data center, all into a single Azure machine and the only network hop happening is towards your website. So this has minimized the network latency um, and the execution that now you can see that can be compared to a local native execution. And also um, the flakiness comes down to like 0%. So that's the underlying architecture of how HyperExecute works. Integrating your current test suite with HyperExecute is a two-step process. Um, first is you have to create a hyperexecute.yaml. Um, it's a workflow-based file that where it's written that how you want to run your test cases. Um, I'll later move on to the syntax, how it works. And then we have the hyperexecute CLI. It's a lightweight binary that we have to place in the root of your project folder so that it can package all the test scripts and send it to the hyper-execute machine so that the execution can happen there. So I'll quickly walk you through how you can configure the YAML file. So this is my sample test ng project. So as you can see, I have four Java classes which I'll be running on hyper-execute and I have already placed the hyper-execute binary in the root of my project. And this is my uh, YAML file that uh, would be triggering the test. So the YAML file consists of multiple parameters. And also, um, there are two types of YAML that can be created. One is the autosplit YAML, and the other one is the matrix one. So let's talk about autosplit first. So when you're running on autosplit mode, um, we have to keep autosplit set to true so that it identifies that this has to run in autosplit mode. Uh, there are some uh, global settings, like you can set up some timeouts, you can define the concurrency. Concurrency is nothing but the number of parallel uh, machines, VMs you want for this particular execution. Let's set it to four so that uh, we can distribute these four classes amongst these four machines. Um, with HyperExecute, you get some uh, um, additional features as well. For example, uh, I have this retry on failure set to true, which means if any test case fails, uh, it would automatically retries, retry that test case inside that machine um, up to five times. So I can just configure this to any number I want. Let's keep it to true for now so that if a test case fails, it is retried twice. Um, similarly, we have runs on. So runs on um, is used to tell the binary that it has to run on this particular OS. So here in this case, it's a Windows OS. Um, then let's move, on, let's move on to the pre-stage. So pre-stage is nothing but uh, prerequisites needed for your project to run. Um, this can consist of uh, n number of commands that is needed to set up that machine so that your project can run successfully. Uh, for this particular sample, we only need the Maven dependencies to be installed. So this is the command that is being used to install those dependencies. 
Uh, other than this, for example, if you want to call any APIs before running the test, if you have any cert certificates to be installed, everything can be placed right over here. Just uh, add in another command. You can run those um, and it will be executed there. After the pre-step, uh, we have a discovery stage. So discovery stage is nothing but we are listing down individual tests so that those tests can be distributed amongst these number of machines. So that's how the auto split works. So once, uh, so if we uh, get deep into it, uh, we are using a grep command to fetch the class name using this uh, from this particular uh, Windows XML. So inside this Windows XML, I have four tests defined and each test is running a different class. So with this distribution, it fetches that class name and uh, it, it is sent to the test runner command here so that it dynamically puts that value. And when, upon distribution, it picks up different test cases. So once your YAML is configured, you can simply okay, use the hyperexecute run command. So that would be the name of the file, the hyperexecute binary. And the path of my YAML file that is present right over here. And also you'll have to provide the username and access key along with the run command. Uh, I have my credentials saved as environment variables, that is LT username and LT access key. So they will be picked up automatically by the hyper execute binary. So as soon as I trigger this, it will start the execution. As you can see, it's an auto split mode. It's running on Windows with the concurrency set to four. Um, yeah, these were the four classes that were supposed to run. So these were discovered. And as you can see, it's packaging my complete test suit and uploading the payload to the hyper execute machines. So if we go back to the dashboard here, yeah, it detected an execution. So yeah, there you go. This is the one that's being executed. So as I said, concurrency to four, I have four different Windows machines that are running here. Um, so as a pre-step, it's, depend it's downloading all the dependencies. So yeah, so it's done. Once all the down dependencies are downloaded, it discovers the test case. Um, so let's say test one is running on this VM. On another one, we have test two. On the fourth one, we have test four. So once the discovery happens, then we have the stage where the actual test runs. So here you can see the live execution logs. Right. So all your control uh, console logs would be visible right over here. And uh, to view the test execution, you can click on this hyperlink, we press detail, and it will di directly take you to the automation dashboard, where you'll get to see the video, as well as the command logs to the right, um, the standard automation uh, dashboard that you see. And uh, all the relevant information around this particular test is, is summarized already right over here with all kinds of logs and everything. So if you click on this uh, Selenium logs, it'll, it'll have this button to take you back to that particular hyper execute stage on which, on which this test was executed. So you can click on, click on here, it'll route you back to the hyper execute stage where this test was run. So, right. So here, as you can see, we have the logs uh, right over here. We got the test execution here. Um, in the post steps, you can prov provide any cleanup activities if there are. Um, you can define them in the post uh, stage uh, in the YAML. Then we have the artifact management. So, for example, if there are any reports being generated um, after the test execution completes, you can provide that path in the YAML, like I have over here, upload artifacts, the name and the path of that YAML within the project. So in this case, uh, it's the target folder, short fire reports, HTML, and then double stars that it can pick up all the files. So that path is directly uploaded. All the files would be uploaded to the artifactory management. 
and it will be available for this particular job right over here. I can click on artifacts. And once all the execution completes, I'll be able to download it from right from the UI. So yeah, this was one of the um, execution modes that uh, we can use that is auto split. Uh, similarly, if you want to run on matrix mode, uh, matrix is nothing but uh, you can control which test case you want to run. Um, now, uh, inside the matrix, you can define all the test cases in an array, like I have four of them here, one, two, three, four. Um, primarily, this is best suited for regression testing and uh, so that you can get more coverage like over multiple um, OS and browser and versions. So like you can see here, I've created multiple arrays uh, with uh, various uh, OSs, uh, like all three OS windows, Mac Linux, and multiple browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Edge, um, with latest version and the 99 version, and uh, four of the test cases. So what would happen is like a matrix is multiplied, all these arrays will be multiplied and the n number of combinations would be created based on So if I run this, um, let's uh, set the concurrency to 20. And uh, I'll run this uh, config. So yeah, as soon as this is triggered, it should create a um, number of machines with all these combinations, like based on the matrix based multiplication. So it's uploading the payload. Let's go back to the dashboard. So here we can see, right, a new job is created. Let's wait for it to upload. So once it's uploaded, I'll be able to see all the combinations that are created. Right, so based on the um, arrays that were there, four tests, uh, three OSs and everything. Okay. Um, three browsers and two versions. There were 72 combinations that were generated, right? So this is how you can um, test coverage with multiple browsers combinations using the matrix mode. Along with this, there are other um, features also that are specific to Hyper Execute, like there are certain smart CI features. So when it comes to auto split mode, we are distributing all the test cases. However, um, so what happens is with every execution, the platform learns, uh, we have a smart grid in place. So what happens is once the test case is run, the with every consecutive execution, the grid, the Hyper Execute analyzes and it automatically reorders the test cases. So it would analyze the longer running test cases and the shorter running test cases. And to get the fastest feedback, it will distribute the longer running with the smaller ones amongst the number of parallel threads you have, parallel VMs you have, and it will get you the optimal performance uh, based on your previous execution. Um, the second smart CI feature would be dependency caching. So let's say, for example, if you're running your test cases using a CI pipeline on Jenkins, so for every execution, it downloads the dependencies. For, let's say an example of test ng, Maven, uh, it would download all the Maven dependencies uh, every time uh, your build is triggered. However, when when you run on hyper execute, you just have to trigger that once. All those dependencies would be saved in the cache memory, and uh, for every consecutive execution. It could directly use that cache instead of downloading it directly from the internet, which also saves some time. Um, which also saves um, like overall build execution time. Along with this, um, uh, we all we already talked about the retry on failure uh, mechanism. How you can configure that. Along with this, uh, you get deep analytics as well. So um, with hyper execute, you can simply go to the analytics tab here. And uh, so with the, yeah, 
when it comes to analytics, uh, you can create your own custom dashboards. So like I have it right over here, um, built with this. Right. So you can add multiple widgets over here based on uh, how you want to build the dashboard. Uh, we have test case, uh, health snapshot, overall test summary, the count, uh, what was the coverage on browser OS combinations, uh, what were the test trends, the pass fail ratio, um, what were the job trends, stage trends, and task trends. So these three are like specific to hyper execute because um, the terminologies that are used are based on hyper execute. So each execution, overall execution is considered as a job. Um, each VM that is located that is considered as a task and um, there are multiple stages within a task and overall in a particular job. So um, all these metrics are available and you can build your custom dashboards uh, depending upon what widget you want. Um, it may be like specific to test cases or it may be like based on stage and job or task trends. Um, along with this, uh, well, there's an also another uh, feature that where you can keep your um, test secrets. Um, basically, it's a vault functionality that we have. Um, it's backed by HashiCorp, so you can simply add a secret. Uh, it's it's based on a key value pair, so uh, you can just uh, name any variable right over here. So let's say um, this is my um, variable name, and I can give. Uh, for example, if there are any access tokens or any password stem on, that you want to use at runtime, you can simply add a secret like this. And uh, you can call this test as an environment variable at runtime because uh, once you add this as a secret, these uh, variables are exposed directly on the hyper execute machine. So you can call it anywhere within the YAML within your test script uh, as you want. So, yeah, that's the. Um, basic overview of how hyper execute works for more information we do have um, the support uh, documentation over here uh, which can be referred so it has all the basics of how we can get started with hyper execute along with a few examples um, language and frameworks has all the relevant uh, repos and how you can configure the yaml uh, what's the difference between different types of running modes and how you can uh, um, set up the YAML based on your project.